Hey guys, how's it going? This is Richard Beck with Beck Tools, and I'm going to do another MR1 video tonight. Now, I'm going to cover some of the questions I've gotten over when I've done the last couple videos. Now, everybody keeps asking me why I only, you know, do one tool at a time. Why I have all these programs. Why am I exporting only one tool? You have to do it that way in the MR1, okay? You cannot export multiple tools. The controller will not stop at the end of one tool and give you an opportunity to change it. It will just keep on going. So if you have two tools, you have to export two programs, okay? That's just how it is with the MR1. Unless you get rid of cut control and you run your own control software, you have to export a program for every single tool. So a lot of people did not know that and I get that question constantly so I just wanted to set uh, explain that right off the bat so what's what the goal is with this video is going to be a raw uncut video I'm going to go through the setup of a part I've already done some videos just go back and check the history I have uploaded those a couple days ago of running the whole part this is going to be how to set up the part so first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring our programs in so of course you plug in your USB drive. I'm not gonna show you how to do that, guys. Um, <laughs> so we've got op one. So when I load the program, this is operation one. So this is basically everything that's gonna be done with my three millimeter, my four millimeter tool. And if you forget what your tool is, you can click and right here, it'll say your diameter is 0.157. Um, and then it's got, you know, it's a bull nose mill. Um, so it gives, it'll give you your tool information right here on line three. This is tool 12. So now I can load all my programs for this part right here. So I can hit the plus button right here. And now I can go to op two. This is a chamfer mill. And now I'm gonna go to op three. That's a thread mill. And it says right here, see, thread mill. This one doesn't say, but if I expand it right there, taper, 45 degrees, um, all the information. And if you touch this, you can rearrange these. It doesn't matter what order they're in. To start it, you have to hit that right there, and then you can stop it. Um, so whichever program you hit is the one that's going to run. Um, so now I'm going to show you a probing cycle, um, how to pick up your part using the probe and this guy right here. And then I'm going to show you how to do set your tool offsets and all of that. So let's swing over here into the machine. And I'm not going to edit this, guys. This is just going to be a raw, unedited, basically a live video. So you're not going to miss anything at all. I'm going to capture everything, including all the wasted time. But I will put chapters so you can skip around um, in the video. First thing is, it's way back there. I don't want to work back there. So, so what you're going to do is you're going to hit the send to front. That's this little yellow button right here. So when I hit that, it says, are you sure? Make sure there's nothing in the way and then hit continue. And now it's gonna move to a user defined location. So in the settings, you tell it where this location is. I've chosen that location. So that's where it's gonna go to. This is my thread mill. We're gonna set that aside. I'm going to try to talk close to the, uh, the camera. I tried an external mic yesterday and I filmed a whole bunch of stuff and I lost audio and wasted my time. So since the machine's not going to be running, this is just going to be the setup. We don't need the external mic. All right, so this is a 3 8 collet. You'll have to put it in here first. And this is your probe. Okay. 
If you have version one Pro, uh, it's no good. You gotta get version two. And uh, most likely none of you still have version one because it's been obsolete for a long time. So, probably preaching to the choir there. They don't sell version one anymore, so take your probe, plug it in. All right, now we're plugged in. My plug's up top. Um, and the plug is wherever you put it. You build the machine, so it's gonna be wherever you told it to be or wherever you put it. So, let's go back over here. So now, well, shoot. You almost need to see two things at once. Um, let me get you an angle here. All right. So we're going to track the machine using our keypad. This is how you move it around. And I'm going to get right to the corner of the part. You'll actually be able to see it on the screen. So you'll see the tool up here when I get close. So right there, let's zoom out a little bit. This is how you navigate. You get your plus, your minus, your fit all. Um, you can orbit. Um, you can drag. So right now, I'm right over here. I'm right on the edge. So I don't know if you can see that. i am got the probe right here in the corner. So is what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up this back corner and the Z all in one cycle. So to do that, you're going to come over here to your probing cycle. So you hit this little button, it drops it down. And these are all your different probing cycles. Um, X, Y, Z, and I don't know if you saw what I said, corner probing. Now I can pick whichever corner I want. I want the back left. Now that I've selected that and my probe is in position, I'm just gonna hit start routine. And that is gonna run the routine. So it's already gotten the Z, it's already gotten the, uh, the X, and now it's got the Y, and it's going to go home. All right, so now I need to tell the tool setter here how high the top of the part is. Since the probe is in and it's got the uh, Z, I can raise it up and then I can calibrate the tool setter. Do not take your probe out before you do this because then you have to do it all over again, okay? So, you're gonna go over here, but before you do that, you have to raise, your, you have to raise up the Z because when you hit this calibrate, it will not raise the Z. It's gonna go straight to the tool setter and if there's anything in the way, it's gonna smash your probe. You don't want to smash your probe, so you raise it up. And then, over here, you can use a tool or probe. It's already set for probe by default, so I'm going to hit calibrate. And then I'm going to say continue, because it wants to make sure you know that it's not going to go up. Continue. And then it is going to touch off. And this is going to calibrate the tool setter. Once you've done this, it's uh, really great because now, now you can just use this button here every time you put a tool in. So I'm going to say, OK. At this point, we can start loading tools. So we're going to load the first tool here. Now the, the tool I'm running 
like I said before in the other videos, I'm not a Haas Tools affiliate, um, but this is the tool I'm running. This is a really great tool for aluminum. There's a part number. So always make sure your, your collets are clean. Unplug the probe, put it somewhere safe, pop the free eights collet out, four millimeter collet in, make sure you don't have excessive stick out, you need enough but no extra, try to stay out of the way so you can okay now the really fun part just gonna hit this button right here I'm gonna say continue and then it's going to set the Z height for that tool There it goes. Okay, we're ready to run the part. Um, so at this point, I am gonna start this part off, but then I'm not gonna show the entire running of the part because we're already at 12 minutes. And this is like another 15 minute program. Um, so we're gonna go over here and say, okay, and it's ready to run. So important thing is to hit start right here run program run program now once it gets started i'm going to uh pause it so i'm gonna hit pause and that gives me a chance to adjust my coolant make sure it's all good also gives me a chance to do the uh rapid override So this is your rapid override. I can hit 25% and then it also gives me a chance if I'm still worried, I could turn my my feed rate down. That way when it starts, you know, it's not gonna break the tool. But honestly, if your settings are off, it's probably gonna break the tool no matter what. So that's what I think about that. Over here, you can adjust your number of flutes. So if I had a five flute, I could set it for five and then that will make sure the chip load calculation is correct. I have a three flute. This is my spindle RPMs, my feed rate. Um, this is the part that we're going to run. So let's go ahead. I'll, okay, you know what? I'm going to let it run and we're going to at least do this first up. Like I said, there'll be chapters. You can skip ahead, but why not? Hopefully. I have a good program. Hopefully, I don't just snap the end mill off here. Um, this is not a tested program, so I don't know. We're going to find out together. I'm going to hit the resume. I'm going to go to 100% until I get close. Then I'll hit the 25% button. So, as long as my Z is correct, this should go good. There we go.
is a 3D adaptive tool path. I am quarter inch deep, 20,000 step over, and a 3,000 chip load, so 72 inches a minute. So now it's going to finish going to the next step. I know when I don't edit, these videos are much longer, but it appears people like the unedited content, um, which is weird. Man, that's aggressive. Ugh. I can't believe that end mill has been break. That's a four millimeter end mill. And the end mill is not new, guys. I've been running this end mill for a while. So if it snaps, it's okay. I don't want it to snap. I mean, it's like fifteen dollar end mill, I think, or eleven. I'm gonna get it a little bit more cooler. I mean, not that the coolant can get down in there, anyways. Uh, that's the one thing about the mist coolant. Also, a lot of people are asking about the mist coolant. This is a kit. This isn't something I put together. Stupid Simple Tools sells the kit. The kit comes with solenoid, pressure regulator, uh, reservoir, the nozzle. It comes with everything, okay? I got that on the last video. Hey, what's in the kit? Or what did I use for the misting system? Right now, I'm making a ton of mist. You probably can't see it, but I'm going to turn it down a little bit. So this is just a counter board, but it's also a 3D adaptive tool path, which means it helically ramps all the way down to depth, and then it starts to do a spiral. I could have bored the hole, but... It's not critical, I don't normally bore it. Whoa! Man, that was... Oh! Damn it. Had the door open, so I got stuff flying at me. Anyways, guys, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Please give me a like or a thumbs up so I can pay for another end mill. Let's not kid ourselves. It won't matter. I, the video's not going to pay for another end mill. Uh, anyways, that's life. It's part of owning a mill. You waste a lot of money on tooling when you get a little bit too crazy. This is a tool path. The one that just failed. So, hey, that's life. See you guys next time.